Delman. The Vizier taught us that there are many like us throughout the Imperium who spill blood in his name. Death cultists, as they call us. He said that no two death cults are the same, just as there are no two identical stars in the void. I will tell you about the Bloodspun web, but I cannot speak on behalf of all death cults. The blood-spun web holds the base of the flagship together with the threads of its faith. Such is our service to the Domini of the Von Valancius line. The Undying One commanded the Domini to embark on a ship and sail the Void's expanse. And thus, it became our duty to protect your dynasty and the Ark that became its home. This great relic of blood and adamantine. Some loathe and fear us. They call us murderers and reapers. Others call us dancers of death who send the souls of the dead on their way. Both are right, both are wrong. We are servants of the Undying Emperor. When he whispers that the time has come for a righteous martyr's soul to be laid in his blessed hands, we come to claim it. When he whispers that the wicked must know of his wrath, we come to reap. This is how we maintain order on the ship, unseen and guided by death's will. We are carried along by a current of blood in the great river of fate. Life is not given or taken away by chance. If I see an enemy of humanity, my blade will sever the thread of their existence. I will not wait for a sign of his divine bidding. I am his will, and I do what must be done. Death's whisper is unmistakable. It is not like the murmur of stars or the hiss of corruption. It is truthful, pure, unyielding. Only the most eminent of us, the High Spinners, can hear the whisper of the Undying One and give voice to his will. They must hone their senses and temper their body and soul for years before his call can reach them. If it puts you more at ease, you can think of these whispers as his providence. There is no thirst, only duty. Killing brings us no pleasure. We are instruments of his will, and this is how we serve him. Spinners carved the chronicles of our history on the stones of our temple long ago. But fate and time have erased our past, just as an exploding star erases a part of the galaxy from existence. It is the Vizier's duty to watch over the flock to lead those who want to learn more of the Undying One, but are fearful of death, and guide those who seek answers in death, but do not know how to live. The Vizier protects all. Those who do not know we exist, those who are grateful for our service, and even those who hate us. 
The Vizier sees what is to come, remembers the past, and accepts the present. They spin a web of faith and blood so strong that no enemy may sunder it. This is the Vizier's burden. This is the legacy of the Matriarch Spider. It is said that she was one of many, born in the void, the Domin's subject. She honored death instead of life, and for this, she was persecuted. It is said that when the arch enemy's forces invaded the flagship during a warp jump, she gathered the Undying One's servants around her and saved the ship from ruin. Together, they spun the first threads of the web to ensure that such devastation would never happen again. It is said that she was strong and indomitable, but as the years passed, her heart became as stone. And thus, the Undying One whispered her name to the one who would become the first vizier of the blood-spun web. Through blood, sweat, tears, and the strength of their convictions, the servants of the Undying One spin the souls of your subjects into threads of balance. This is why we refer to ourselves as spinners. Those who are newly committed to the blood-spun web are called lesser spinners. If they are faithful in their service to him, they may eventually become spinners. The most devout of us all are known as the High Spinners, of whom there are seven, each bearing a unique title. The Vizier, the first spinner, leads the cult. I, Kibella, am the second spinner. The third spinner's name is Io, and there are four more. The Undying One is death itself. We serve him, and thus we serve death. This is not a comparison, attribution, or preference. It is the truth, and nothing can change it. The tenets are knowledge, an art that is passed down from one generation of the blood-spun web to the next. Even so, there are spinners who will never fully comprehend this knowledge in the time allotted to them by the Undying One. The tenets dictate how one follows the thread of life, but they are also the thread itself, from first breath to last. The tenets cannot be taught. They must be lived. Only then will you understand. I am the second spinner of the blood-spun web, a spear in the hand of the Undying Emperor. I am your shield and shadow, your blade. The tenets compel us to let our deeds speak on our behalf. There is no one in the cult who does not know me, so I have grown accustomed to taciturnity in matters regarding myself. Ask, and I will try to give you an answer that will satisfy your thirst for knowledge. I remember nothing of my childhood. The Vizier says this is because of my training and the injuries I received in battle. He told me it is the fate of all High Spinners. The only memories I have are of the blood-spun web 
and the brothers and sisters who serve the cult alongside me. When we were young, we would sew our eyes shut and wander through the bays for months at a time, starving, surviving, dying. This trial of darkness honed the senses of those who passed it. We were elated, for we knew we were blessed by him. When we grew older, we learned to wield our weapons, and our mentors tested us with pain, poison, and the weight of deceitful words. In time, our bodies no longer felt pain. Our blood became resistant to toxins, and our focus could not be shaken. We were at peace, for we had shed everything that could encumber our faithful service to him. When we came of age, we faced a great trial, a year-long vigil spent in unceasing prayer to the Undying One. When hunger and other base sensations faded away, we attained true comprehension of ourselves and our place in the world. Our place between life and death. We were proud, for on that day, he truly accepted us, and we accepted him. Those who devote themselves to the service of the Undying One must be prepared to pay any price. Emotions, blood, life, death, memory. We all must lose what we hold most dear to become a spear in his hand. Some may lose everything, but they will also gain everything. When we join the cult, we relinquish our past. The blood-spun web becomes our new family. I have seen the pain, terror, and doubt in the eyes of those who hear the Undying One whisper the names of their kin. For some, the blessing of oblivion is a gift not unlike death. No. Attachment makes us weak. The weak meet their demise prematurely. But such death does not please the Undying One. For a soul must not be claimed before their time has come. It is true that spinners occasionally cross paths with those outside the cult. But such paths always diverge in the end. We may walk the same road together, but we are nothing more than temporary traveling companions. It is similar for those of your retinue. Our threads may intertwine for a time, but all will go their separate ways, as is inevitable. But not you and I, Domin. Our threads cannot be unwoven, and only the Undying One will end my service to you. It brings me comfort when my brothers and sisters cross to the other side. The Undying One has called them to his side, so they can serve him in ways we cannot. Know your enemy and prevail in battle. Know your ally and prevail in war.
You can see for yourself. Is it possible to experience pleasure if one feels nothing? The flesh remains untorn. Good. You have found an interesting use for this tool, yet it still serves its purpose. Do you have other questions? Your body will fail you, Domin. Your bones will break. Your tendons will snap. Your heart will stop. Our rituals of self-perfection are unending. They demand absolute dedication and decades of special training. However, if you devote the next 30 years of your life to its study, you might be able to learn the basics. It is not difficult to speak the truth. Torture? I bear the sacred marks of the Undying One's service. Death has bestowed them upon me. Though others may cherish hollow riches or meaningless beauty, it is my duty to cherish his gift of blood. Each wound is a symbol of our service to him. Each drop of blood carries his blessing. To renounce these scars is to renounce the Undying One himself. Death whispers to me, you are worthy of bearing his marks. Tell me, Domin, do you wish to honor your flesh with his gifts? Enough. You have made a mockery of the sacred ritual. So be it. The tenets teach us to hold no ill will. But I will have no part in this. I met her once when I was young. The Vizier saw a serpent hiding among those close to Domin Theodora ready to sink its fangs into her throat. I was ordered to find the serpent and sever the soul from its body. I watched and waited for weeks. I hid among the shadows, the air ducts and the faceless masses. Once I found the serpent, I sliced off its head and returned to the temple. I doubt that Domin Theodora ever saw me, but the three ritual cuts I left behind on the body let her know that this death was pleasing to him. They sent us a grand feast from the upper decks before the cycle's end. We gave it to the hungry. The Gothic we use to communicate is different to that spoken on the upper decks. Domin has many meanings. Giver of life, Lord or Lady of the Ark, and Shadowless Son. The Matriarch Spider gave this title to the rogue trader who allowed her to form the Bloodspun Web. We use other titles as well. For example, Venai means Master of the Immaterium, or Watcher of the Veil. Vil 
means one who must go to the other side. Amic means one you can trust in battle. I will listen, but I will make my own decision. Death claims all, one way or another. But it is within my power to stay the sentence. I use blood to read his sacred cards and hear the whisper of the Undying One. His tarot is not an answer, but a question I ask of the universe. And the universe answers with questions of its own. In this sacred communion, I perceive hundreds of possible outcomes. They are all true, and yet they are only visions. I know what will come to pass, and yet I do not. I am the spear of his retribution, not a witch or a sorcerer or a soothsayer. I have no strange powers, but I do bear his blessing. I do not command the veil. I am guided by his whisper and led by my faith, by the tenets. Please, do not mistake me for something I am not. It is a holy relic that has been passed down from generation to generation. Only the first and second spinners are allowed to study the sacred cards and interpret their meaning. We use his tarot to guide the cult and discern the tangled threads of fate. Thirty-four. There used to be more, but some have perished in the darkness of time. Their loss is a great tragedy for the blood-spun web. Ask the cards, Domin, and I will listen. The first card is the young warrior. It suggests inexperience, a path of becoming. The second card is the shattered world inverted. The path will have twists, turns, and thorns, but you will gather allies along the way and find what was lost. The third, the hound inverted, Someone has marked you as their prey and is chasing you through a field of traps. The lost child. You will leap into one of those traps of your own free will and place your trust in someone truly desperate. May the Undying One shroud your footsteps from the Faithless. I'm here, Domin. All of my thoughts are of you, Domin. <laughs> 